We are the last generation, part two. Part one showed us how we are the last generation. This video is part two. Again, we will follow the rule from Matthew that we discussed in part one, where Jesus gave the signs of the end, and then says that this generation, the generation that sees those end time signs, will be the generation that is still alive when Jesus returns, therefore the last generation. But we cannot know the exact day or hour when he will return. Matthew 24, 33, 34 and 36. When you see all these things, know that it is near. This generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. But of that day and hour, no one knows. The Bible describes that day that Jesus returns with the term thief, because thieves come at an unknown time and is therefore a surprise. Just as Jesus will come at an unknown time and many won't be ready and so will be surprised. Matthew 24, 42 to 44. Therefore stay awake, for you do not know what day your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. The Bible actually names the day that Jesus returns like a thief as the day of the Lord, 1 Thessalonians 5.2. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Now is the day of the Lord just the actual day that Jesus comes, or does the day represent something more? Well, we'll see that on that day, the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the earth will be burned up. 1 Peter 3, 10 and 12. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth and all the works that are therein shall be burned up. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. So we know that the day of the Lord includes when Jesus returns to earth and also the burning up of the earth. Now when do these two events occur and do they occur on the same literal day? Well in Revelation we see that in between Jesus' return and the final judgment is a gap of 1,000 years. Revelation 25 but the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. You have the first resurrection, and a thousand years later, you have the second resurrection, which is all of the non-Christians that get resurrected for the Battle of Armageddon. We therefore need to see whether the burning of the earth occurs at the start or the end of the thousand years. Let's stay in chapter 20 of Revelation and put the verses in order. Revelation 20 But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. And verse 7 Now when the thousand years have expired, Satan will be released from his prison. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. We see that the burning up, which is the lake of fire, and then the new replacement earth and heaven, or sky, occurs 1,000 years after Jesus returns. 3 Peter 3.12 told us that on the day of the Lord, even the heavens, or in other words, the sky, will be on fire. Therefore, at the start of Revelation chapter 21, we see a new heaven, or sky, and a new earth. 
Revelation 21.1 Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. So Jesus returns. There is then the first resurrection. The second resurrection occurs a thousand years later. During that thousand years, it is judgment. And then the lake of fire at the end of the thousand years destroys everything and every lost person. We know that the day of the Lord must therefore encompass the whole of this period. And therefore this day is actually 1,000 years. But how can a thousand year period be described as a day? We need a scripture to back this up. 2 Peter 3, 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. We're told not to be ignorant of this. Other versions tell us not to forget this. At first, we can look at the verse and interpret a thousand years as representing a long time period. Or is this number used in the same way that other numbers in the Bible are used? It represents something specific. Well, let's test it with some other things in the Bible. Did Adam die the same day he ate the fruit, as stated would be the result? Genesis 2.17 But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. Now we can say that his body started to die the day he ate the fruit, or that God sacrificed animals to cover Adam's body, which represents Jesus' death on the cross, and therefore Adam didn't die the same day. But how long did Adam actually live? Genesis 5, 5. And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. How old was the oldest recorded person in the Bible? Genesis 5, 27. Altogether, Methuselah lived a total of 969 years, and then died. Then to God, did any of these people live more than a day? Some got close to a thousand years, but none of the ones recorded seem to make it past that age. Let's study that millennium in Revelation. Does God state why it's a thousand years long? Well, let's work it out by looking at where God's people will be during those thousand years. And the answer is, they will be in God's city known as New Jerusalem. Revelation 29, the camp of God's people the city he loves. Where is this city? Is it on earth? No, it's in the sky above the earth and comes down to earth once the thousand years are over. Revelation 21.2 I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. That means the earth is truly desolate, no human is alive on earth, and the land is resting for 1,000 years. If everything living is in heaven, then that means that the earth is empty of life. It's truly desolate. No human is alive on earth, and therefore the land is actually resting for a thousand years. Let's compare it to another time in the world's history when God's people were taken from their land. When they were taken from Canaan and put into Babylon, the Bible says that Canaan enjoyed its Sabbath rests. 2 Chronicles 36.21 The land enjoyed its Sabbath rests. All the time of its desolation it rested, until the seventy years were completed, in fulfilment of the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. These Sabbath rests of the land were supposed to occur every seventh year, Leviticus 25.4. But in the seventh year, the land is to have a year of Sabbath rest, a Sabbath to the Lord. Do not sow your fields or prune your vineyards. Therefore, the length of time that they were held in captivity, and the length of time, therefore, that Canaan was given its Sabbath rests, was determined by the amount of time they had lived in Canaan 
and built up a debt of Sabbath rest. So, for example, if you live for 600 years in a place and you don't give it Sabbath rest, then you owe that place 100 years of rest. So the desolate earth during those thousand years will allow the earth to receive its Sabbath rests that it hasn't experienced because we humans haven't given it. How long do humans have to have existed for, for the land to require 1,000 years of Sabbath rest? 6,000. If after every six years the land is supposed to rest one year, then after 6,000 years the earth will need to rest for 1,000 years. The Bible has a genealogy from Adam of how old each patriarch was when their son was born. Why did the Bible include this? Surely God wants us to use this information. And by adding up the ages, we see that the earth is around 6,000 years old. This would therefore make the millennium, or the day of the Lord, which is the 1,000 year millennium, a type of Sabbath, a Sabbath for the land. Calling the final day the day of the Lord is very similar to another day that's referenced in the Bible called the Lord's Day, Revelation 1.10. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. What is the day of the Lord that John, the person who wrote Revelation, referring to? Well, we find Jesus answering that question. Matthew 12.8 For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. This is why we call the weekly Sabbath the Lord's Day, and the 1,000 year Sabbath is called the Day of the Lord. This again confirms the typology. The world has existed for six days, and a Sabbath day of a thousand years is left. So we are now at the 6,000 year mark, which means that midnight on the sixth day is about to occur, and it's time for the midnight cry that Jesus, our bridegroom, is about to return. Matthew 25, 6. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. The day of the Lord, the 1,000-year Sabbath of the Lamb, is about to begin. <laughs>